Hi my reading friends, this is Sara. Today I am going to read some stories from Aesop's Fables. Aesop's Fables are a collection of stories by a storyteller of ancient Greece. Let's begin. So in the picture we can see a man, he seems to be holding the paw of a great pig lion. So Androcles and the lion and other stories. Androcles and the Lion Long ago, in a faraway kingdom, there once lived a kind slave called Androcles. His master was very harsh and cruel. He used to treat poor Androcles very badly. Soon it became impossible for Androcles to bear the cruelties of his master. One day he decided to run away from his master's house and hide in the forest. Androcles wandered in the thick forest in search of food and shelter for a very long time. You can see this is Androcles running away into the forest. Suddenly he came face to face with a wild lion. Androcles was frightened to see the lion. But the animal did not move or come near him. He only cried in pain. So this great big lion was crying in pain. Androcles was surprised and approached the lion. He found that the lion was injured and bleeding a lot. Androcles was a kind man and he could not see anyone in sorrow or pain. He decided to help the injured animal. He examined the lion's paw and what did he see there? He saw a thorn. He pulled out the thorn that had wounded its paw. He tore a piece of cloth from his dress and dressed the wound. So here we can see how Androcles is pulling out a thorn from the lion's paw. The lion was immediately relieved and gratefully licked Androcles' hand. He then took Androcles to his cave and brought meat for him every day. Many days passed. Androcles continued living with his new friend happily in his cave. But one day the king's men came to the forest, found and arrested Androcles. It was decided that he would be punished harshly because he had run away from his master's house. So these are all the soldiers who have come and caught Androcles and are taking him back. He was to be thrown before a lion who had been kept in a cage without food for several days. He had to fight the lion. So that was his punishment. In olden times, uh, this was the punishment. People would be thrown before a hungry wild animal. The day of punishment arrived. The king and all his courtiers gathered in the grounds of the palace to watch the scene of Androcles' death. Androcles was thrown before the lion's cage and the cage was opened. He helplessly waited as the hungry animal came towards him. So you can see how the lion is let out of the cage. But when the lion came towards Androcles, instead of attacking him, he started licking his feet like a pet dog. Everyone was surprised to see this. Androcles immediately recognized the lion whose life he had saved. When the king asked him why the lion did not kill him, Androcles told him the whole story. Impressed by Androcles' kindness and the loyalty of the lion, the king freed both of them. So the moral of our story is that kindness affects both man and animal alike. So the next story is the wise lark. You can see the lark here. She seems to have a nest and there are three eggs in the nest. So, once a lark was looking for a place to make her nest. After miles of flying, she finally found a large green field of wheat in a village that belonged to a farmer. She made her nest there and laid her eggs. Soon her eggs were hatched. The lark was happily living in the field with her family. One day the farmer came to the field and looking at his ripe crop said, I must request my neighbors to help me with the harvest. 
One of the young larks overheard the farmer. He quickly went to his mother and told her about it. The mother lark, who was very wise, thought for a while and then said, We don't have to leave this place yet. If the farmer has sent for his friends, then it means he's still not determined enough to harvest his crop. So they continued staying in the field. A few days later, Mother Lark saw the farmer visiting the overripe field again. None of my friends agree to reap the harvest for me. Tomorrow I shall hire a few reapers and harvest the field myself, he said thoughtfully. After thinking over what she heard, the lark quickly flew to her family and said, We must fly away now. The farmer will surely harvest his field this time. I heard him say that he shall reap it himself. The wise lark left the field and saved herself and her family from trouble. The farmer was finally able to reap his harvest by helping himself. So self-help is the best help. If you help yourself, surely your work will be done. So thank you. Let's see what is the next story. So the qualities of man. Let's see what is this. There is a horse, a dog, an ox in this picture. One cold winter evening, all the animals in the forest were shivering in the cold. A horse, an ox and a dog from the forest decided to go to the nearby village and seek shelter there. They saw a man near a cottage and went up to him. The man received them kindly and lit a fire to warm them. Along with the shelter, the man also gave them plenty to eat. He fed the horse out of his own stock of oats, gave the ox plenty of hay, and fed the dog with the meat from his own supply. The animals were hungry and very happy to get food. So you can see how the horse is eating the oats, the ox is feeding on the hay, and the dog is eating the meat. The animals were very grateful to the man and wanted to help him in some way. So they decided to give him their main qualities. These qualities describe the three stages of man's life. The horse presented the man with strength and the stubborn nature of his youth. The ox gifted the man qualities which defined his middle age. He made the man hardworking so that he could earn wealth to support himself in his old age. So the ox has given him wealth, the horse has given him strength. The dog gave the man qualities that made him distrustful. This is the reason why it is so hard to please an old man who does not believe or trust anyone easily and is very particular about his necessities and comfort. Therefore, man has both useful and harmful qualities just like the animals. We all have animal-like qualities within us of which some are beneficial and some are harmful. And it lies to us to use the ones that are beneficial to us and all the people around us. Thank you.